Hi, my name is Pat Helland, and I work at Salesforce. I'm here to tell you about decoupled transactions, low tail latency online transactions atop jittery servers. This is simply a thought experiment about avoiding jitter. It's an imaginary system, just a what if design. So what's the motivation for this work? Jitter refers to probabilistic response times that we frequently see in cloud environments. Messages to servers and their, across the networks are usually fast, but sometimes slow and sometimes very slow. This is getting worse over time as these environments get more crowded. Complex systems have to manage their latency. They do it with idempotent work, where it's okay to do it more than once, and then redundant execution, either by timeout and retry, or by automatically sending it to two or three copies and waiting for the first. This happens in big data, in MapReduce stragglers, where you retry the piece of the work, or in online, where a server takes too long and you send it to another server so the humans don't get stuck waiting. But databases are more difficult. They must be transactionally correct. You gotta get the perfect answer. But anything can go slow at any time. If it's always fast, nothing can be centralized, because if that centralized thing in turn goes slow, now you're in a real pickle. What is the transactional truth? How can databases offer low latency on top of jittery servers? The answer comes from Quorum. You wait for responses from enough servers. So what's the big idea behind decoupled transactions? We want to do jitter-free snapshot isolation transactions. There's two parts to snapshot isolation. Snapshot reads mean you're reading changes as of a particular time of commitment. And co conflict checking says you cannot update records if another transaction has changed them since that snapshot time used by this transaction. So we're doing a record version database. We have lots of worker servers and the application calls them and they do the transaction. What they do is they create new record versions for every record that's updated. Transaction commit makes those record versions stick and be visible throughout the system. The transaction commit happens at one worker with its own private log using no two-phase commit across workers. You can do this because the quorum log can take appended changes without jitter. You don't have to get to every replica of the log, just enough replicas. Snapshot read can be done by looking at older versions in a shared LSM and shared storage. To do that, you need to have a catalog you can get to very quickly, and you'd use Quorum to make sure you don't get stuck if some of the replicas of the catalog are stuck. This can track files in logs, and it can track files in the LSM. Newer versions read from the updating worker that recently committed them. Now, yeah, that might go slow. And if it goes slow and it jitters, then you need to kill the worker, fence and repair its log so it can't do any more work and read the record from the repaired log. Conflict check has two parts. First, you have to order the transactions with a partial order, but you can do that with Quorum. And then you need to do conflict check for the updates not bumping into each other, and you can use Quorum to do that. So here we see a Quorum coordinator that does partial order of transactions and conflict check of transactions. Total order versus partial order. Total order is slow. Either it's leader-based and that leader can jitter and you have a problem, or it's consensus-based and that can take unbounded time. Total order means either X is before Y or Y before X, and you have to see each one is permanently there before the next one, that's slow. Partial order is fast. It's distributed knowledge on each node, node by node state as they see events. But it means either X is before Y, Y is before X, or X and Y are at the same time. Now you see this here where on server one, C was before B, but on servers two and three, B is before C. And that's partial order. Decoupled transactions only uses partial order. Quorum provides partial order using enough servers. Not all servers need to participate. You don't wait for sick or slow stuff. Enough is enough. You wait for a quorum and you tolerate partial order. How do I get a jitter-free partial order? Now, there will be fuzzy transitions. We'll see this. Quorum says when you will remember. You send to n replicas, and you wait for q of them to respond, where q is more than half of n. Quorum says later clients will see the work. So here we see n of three, and a bunch of clients are sending the request to those three replicas of the quorum. 
Client K sends out the three requests, gets an answer first from replica C, then second from replica A, and doesn't care about B, it's got two of three. But that order was reordered, how did that work? Confluence says, when does order not matter? If execution order doesn't matter, you can combine these responses at the client, and if you get Q of N and reordering is okay, now you know what's up. So if I have two clients and three replicas of a quorum, client two can send work and he crisply sees operation X didn't happen before client one asked for operation X. Once client one asked for operation X, client two is racing and sometimes it sees it and sometimes it doesn't. Only after client one has seen quorum X are we guaranteed that work from client two will definitely see operation X. Once operation X is completed a quorum, other clients will see it. That fuzzy window is temporary. Quorum says, now it will be remembered. There are two different partial orders in this system. Happened before refers to the sequence of messages flowing across servers in the distributed system. And the messages form a partial order, but any message in any server may jitter, so happened before it's gonna jitter. Confluence says reordering is okay. It is a property of some programs, and that property means the output value is independent of the input order into the programs. You can have deterministic output, even if you have non-deterministic execution order. Confluence needs a notion of monotonicity, some abstract partial order that tells you what that deterministic output should be. For us, seniority, we define it as a domain-specific partial order. The seniority for decoupled transactions is the partial order of transactions. So we see two different partial orders. The happen before sequence of messages, which will jitter when servers and networks go slow. And seniority in decoupled transactions, which manages the lifetime of transactions and more, but it does not jitter. So how can I do with partial order of transactions and conflict detection? Well, we start with a logical time, which is loosely aligned clocks across the servers, both workers and coordinators. Each of them has their physical time and an offset to their perceived logical time. They drift together. As you see, others are faster or slower. Individual servers will speed up or slow down. This does not have to be perfect, but if it's pretty good, then the performance is better. As a worker tries to commit a transaction, it asks the coordinators for a permission to commit and waits for a quorum. This gives it partial order of transactions and conflict detection against earlier and concurrent transactions. For partial order, the worker guesses a future logical time and proposes it in the permission request. The coordinators then postpone it until they get to that logical time and process it at the desired logical time. If a quorum of them process it at that logical time, you've now created a partial order of transactions based upon the logical time at which they were processed. Now they can do check for conflicts against any transactions that they pro processed at an earlier logical time, seeing if there are conflicts back to the snapshot time. You end up with a quorum because every transaction T1 is processed at a quorum of servers, and so T2 also is, there will be at least one overlapping coordinator. You do have fuzzy quorum anomalies because sometimes a transaction doesn't commit, but it might cause a conflict, and that's acceptable and it's rare. Seniority defines the partial order when things start, the transaction commit time. Quorum ensures transactions are visibly there as of that seniority time. Retirement is a partial order of when things finish. They finish when they're earlier than the oldest snapshot and we don't need them anymore for conflicts. Quorum ensures transactions are visibly gone as of the retirement time. So how can we do jitter-free snapshot reads of the past? Well, let's look at it as two pieces. How can I read the older record versions out of an LSM? Well, I will need to be able to find the record by key, and so I have to talk to a catalog that has them organized by key and then tells us which data files to read in the LSM. If the catalog uses quorum, it can navigate the LSM by key. If the data files are kept in a leaderless storage with immutable data, something like consistent hashing, then I can find that fast. How do I find the recent record versions? Well, there's a notion called whereabouts, which is also jitter-free. The coordinator quorum tells every worker at the beginning of the transaction which workers made changes to which records recently. The details are in the paper. Then you ask the committing worker, hey, what's that recent value for the record you might have committed? 
but it might go slow. If it goes slow and it's jittery, you can read anything that's committed from its log. Is the worker sick? I can look at the log. If enough things have not made progress, it's sick. Then I can kill it by telling replicas of the log, don't take more work. That's called fencing it. I can then repair it so that I can read the same answer no matter how many times I read the log. And then I can read the log itself to find out what the value was for the record I'm looking for. This has an interesting thing. It's flipping on FLP. Fincher Lich Patterson is wonderful. It says, you can't tell the difference between a slow and a sick server in an asynchronous network in bounded time. But it turns out if they're logging and you can look at a quorum of the log in bounded time, you can tell it's sick quickly. Now, I also cannot pick a single log repair because picking one server to do log repair requires consensus. So we must do concurrent log repair with monotonic changes and storing them in a quorum catalog. So what are the takeaways from this presentation? Cloud computing has increasing unpredictability in its timeliness. We want fast databases. How can we do predictably fast systems with unpredictable pieces? Well, there's total order versus partial order. Total order is centralized or consensus and has unpredictable latency. Easier to use, but jittery. Partial order is lively, quick, predictable, and responsive. It's harder to use, but it's fast. Quorum, confluence, seniority, and retirement. They give you jitter-free complex systems. Quorum tells you when you will remember. Confluence allows you to reorder without coordination. Seniority gives you a partial order of the work. And retirement tells you when you can forget about old work. Snapshot isolation is reading as of a snapshot and avoiding conflicts since the snapshot. But we can get jitter-free reads of con committed work with partial order and jitter-free transaction conflict detection with partial order. I don't agree with consensus. Total order is brittle. Partial order provides more robust solutions.